you for taking time out of your very busy lives for us to all be here together this afternoon. I thank you so very much for all you do, all you have done, and all we will do over these next years. of incredible leaders and your voice matters so much right now and I think there's so much about our campaign that is about the spirit of reminding everyone that we're all in this together. We are all in this together. Thank you. And to all the governors who are here with us today. Oh, and they are always one of the such incredible leaders, both for their state and our nation, and such dear friends. And I thank you all, including, of course, Michigan's own Governor Wayne. And to the governors, I want to say you've been traveling the country for our campaign. I also want to recognize Senator Stabenow, yeah. Representative Stolten, who we will re-elect, yeah. and while we're at it, let's send Representative Slotkin to the United States. All right, so we got work to do. 18 days. 18 days left in one of the most consequential elections of our life. And as you know, everyone here knows, this election is truly about two very different visions of our nation. Ours, that is focused on the future. Donald Trump, that is focused on the past. That is focused on bringing down the cost of living for working families, investing in small businesses and entrepreneurs. Ours that is about protecting reproductive freedom. But none of that is what we hear from Donald Trump. Instead, it is just the same old tired playbook. He has no plan for how he would address the needs of the American people. And he is, as we have seen, only focused on himself. And now, he is ducking debates and canceling interviews. And his on-campaign team recently said it is because of exhaustion. <laughs> is ready to chart a new way forward. Yeah. America is ready for a new and optimistic generation of leadership. Yeah. That is this is why Democrats, Republicans, and Independents are supporting our campaign. Yeah. In fact, earlier this week, over 100 Republican leaders from across the country joined me on the campaign, including some who even served in Donald Trump's own administration. The people who know him best. And I believe all of this shows that the American people want a president who works for all of them. And that has been the story of my entire career. In my career, I've only ever had one client, the people. As a young corporate prosecutor, I protect women and children. As Attorney General of California, I fought for students and veterans. As Vice President, I have stood up for workers and seniors. 
And as president, I will stand up for all Americans. <laughs> as a nation and a nation of people who see what we have in common more than what separates us. We will build towards a future where we have an economy that works for all Americans. We will build what I call an opportunity economy so that every American has an opportunity. My plan will expand Medicare to cover the cost of home health care. So that more of our seniors can live with dignity. And you know, I just give you a little background on it in terms of a personal story. So I took care of my mother when she was sick. And for any of you who have taken care of an elder relative, you know what that is. It's about trying to cook something that they can eat. It's about trying to find clothes that they can, they can handle on their skin. It's about trying from time to time to think about something that'll put a smile on their face or maybe just make them laugh. It's about dignity. But under the current system, and especially for those in the sandwich generation who are raising young kids while you're taking care of your parents, it's difficult and under the current system to get help for taking care of your seniors unless you've got the extra money sitting around you'd have to leave your job or pay down all of your savings to qualify for medicaid that's not right that's not right so my plan is about saying let's have medicare cover the cost of home health care child's life so that our young parents can do what they naturally want to do, which is parent their children well, but they don't always have the resources to be able to do it. So let's help them out so that they can buy a car seat, so that they can buy a crib, so that they can take care of that baby's needs during that critical phase of their development. We all benefit from it. American manufacturing and innovation. Because I will make sure America, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century.
today. We must and we will invest in the industries that built America, like steel, iron, and the great American auto industry. And we will ensure that the next generation of breakthroughs from advanced batteries to electric vehicles are not just invented, but built right here in America by American union workers. And Michigan, I know I'm gonna tell you what you already know, but let us be clear for folks who are watching from different parts of the country. Contrary to what my opponent is suggesting, I will never tell you what kind of car you have to drive, but here is what I will do. I will invest in manufacturing communities like Kent County. Together we will retool existing factories, hire locally, and work with unions to create good paying jobs. jobs that do not require a college degree, because here's where I come from. Yeah. I know a college degree is not the only measure of the skills and experience. Yeah. And I intend to re-examine federal jobs, when you all elect me president, yeah. And then I intend to challenge the private sector to do the same. Yeah. Now, all of this is to say Donald Trump has a different approach. He makes big promises, and he always fails to do it. So, remember, he said he was the only one. You know how he talks. He, the only one who could bring back America's manufacturing jobs. <laughs> then, America lost almost 200,000 manufacturing jobs when he was president. Right. Yes. Including tens of thousands of jobs right here in Michigan. Right. And those losses started before the pandemic. Yes. Making Donald Trump one of the biggest losers. <laughs> a disaster. Right. Yes. Yes. He promised workers in Warren that the auto industry would, and I'm going to quote, not lose one plant during his presidency. Those were his words, not one plant. Then American automakers announced the closure of six auto plants when he was president, including General Motors in Warren and Stellantis in Detroit. Thousands of Michigan auto workers lost their jobs. And Donald Trump's running mate recently suggested that if they win, they would threaten the Grand River Assembly plant in Lansing. Okay. The same plant our administration protected earlier this year, saving 650 union jobs. And we believe that you deserve a president who will protect them and not insult them. Yeah. 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 And make no mistake, Donald Trump is no friend of labor. Let's be really clear about that, no matter what the noise is out there. He is no friend of labor. Just look at the record. Instead of his rhetoric, look at the record. And let's not fall for the okie doke. No, seriously, he encouraged automakers to move their plants out of Michigan so he could pay, they could pay their workers less. Understand what that was about. So they could pay their workers less. And when the UAW went on strike to demand the higher wages they deserved, Donald Trump went to a non-union shop. And attacked the UAW. And he said, he said, striking 
and collective bargaining don't make, quote, a damn bit of sense. A damn bit of difference. That is not quote, pardon my language, a damn bit of difference is what he said. So Michigan, you know better. Strong unions mean higher wages, yeah. better health care, yeah. and greater dignity yeah. for union members and for everyone, whether or not you Which is why when I am president, I will sign the PRO Act into law and make it easier for workers to join a union and the And now, Donald Trump is making the same empty promises to the people of Michigan that he did before. Hoping.